I be catching body. <laughs> What's poppin', folks? Uh, welcome back to Cauldron of Thought. Uh, I'm going to be starting a new series today. Uh, it's going to be called the Cauldron Catchup. Maybe I don't know. Kind of a corny name, but whatever. The main premise is I'm just gonna talk about older movies or newer movies. Basically, movies I haven't seen or movies that I have seen and that I have seen again. But I mean, I'm just kind of gonna talk about them, review them. You know, just basic stuff. And the first episode is going to be on one of my favorite movies of all time, The Craft. <laughs> The Craft was a movie that was released in 1996. It is basically a teen drama, I guess. I wouldn't really consider it a horror movie or a thriller. It's not really scary by today's standards, but I guess maybe back then you could call it a thriller in some parts. The main premise is uh, this girl who I don't remember her name, and I just watched this movie last night. She moves to LA. She meets these three other girls at her new school who uh, want to be witches, and it's basically just them meeting up and, you know, what ensues? As I said earlier, there's uh, the main girl and then there's three other characters. Uh, Gianna Michaels, Sydney Prescott, and Rochelle. Oh, and also there's uh, Dipshit, who is played by Skeet Ulrich. Ulrich? I, I don't know. One of the two. So, um, the movie opens with uh, the main girl moving to LA. And uh, almost as soon as she gets there, she runs into some problems. Because uh, some homeless dude just runs up on her in her house and tries to give her a snake. No, not that kind of snake. Actual big ass snake. It's not that kind of movie. This kind of shows that she has a phobia of snakes. Um, it's a recurring theme throughout the movie. And it's kind of just, you know, a way to set it up in the beginning. After that, she starts up at the school where she meets uh, our three other main characters. And uh, we discover that they're basically a little coven they're witches technically but they can't really do anything they don't have any powers yet because they need a fourth person and uh during french class uh sydney notices that the main girl uh, actually has powers because she's spinning a little uh, uh a pencil she's spinning a little pencil uh, on her desk which means that she's basically the fourth person that they need because they need basically someone for the four corners because there's four elements uh, after that we learn that the main girl has a thing for dipshit um i, I don't know why he, he looks really bad in this movie i don't know if it's the hair or what but he just looks super dopey in this movie like billy loomis he could get it uh, dipshit Nah, keep him away from me. And he's like, oh, psh, babe, you can come watch me play a uh, football, do football practice. She's like, oh, that'd be so, oh, that'd be so hot. And uh, she she goes and does that, which is uh, insane. Um, I, I don't know why, but I, I guess that's what they did in the 90s. I, I know I look like I'm 30, but uh, I was born in the 2000s, so I'm not really sure what's up with that. This is the first time the main girl really officially meets the other three, John, Rochelle, and uh, Sydney. And they basically reveal to her that Dipshit's uh, kind of a dipshit. He's basically a man whore. Um, he gets around a lot at school, and he's been with... Uh, I know he's been with Gianna. I don't think he's been with Rochelle, and he definitely hasn't been with Bonnie, because Bonnie has scars on her body, which I will get back to in a minute. So, after they all meet up, they uh, go to some weird magic shop where they uh, steal, which is a bad thing. Don't do that. Three new girls end up stealing a few uh, products, but the only one that pays ends up being the main one, which shows how good of a character she is or something. I don't know. Remember that snake guy from earlier? Well, guess what? He came back. And you know what they did? They hit him with a car. And that's kind of the inciting incident that makes them think, oh, hey, maybe we can do this. Maybe we can get some power. So at that point, they describe Manon. Now, Manon is basically just some made-up deity that they had for the movie. Um, I did some research into him. He's not really anything real. And uh, basically, from what they explain, if they take his powers, you know, they'll become actual witches. And the only way to do that is to call the Four Corners. Now, the reason they needed a fourth member was because of the four elements. Earth, air, fire, water. And each girl is corresponded to a different element. For the main chick, it's earth. For Gianna, it's air. Uh, for Sydney, fire. And for Rochelle, it's water. And they basically just want this power to solve whatever issues that they have. This one lives in a trailer with her abusive stepdad. This one has scars all over her body. This one has a racist classmate. And uh, as far as the main girl, she doesn't really have anything wrong with her. She's kind of just there, once again, a running theme. So at first, the main girl says, uh, no, nah, I don't want to do any of this. You guys are weird. She dips. She decides to go on a date with Dipshit. Now, Dipshit's kind of an idiot. Zero risk. And he tries to get it in, and she says, uh, no. I'm waiting till marriage. And he's like, damn, I." Right. And that's it. And the next scene's basically just showing why each girl, you know, wants powers. So, the next day, 
uh, Mangrel finds out that dipshit said that uh, they had sex. And uh, long story short, her jaw was hurting after two minutes. Which, trust me, I've been there, pal. Oh, I don't have a gag reflex. Yeah, okay, sure, sweetheart. So that's basically what convinces the girl to basically, you know, join. So they have some field trip, and uh, they end up going to the forest, basically, to summon Manon. So that's when they kind of solidify their coven and uh, make spells. And each girl uh, comes up with their own different spell. So Rochelle wants revenge on Barbie because she's been dealing with a racist classmate, which is not a vibe. Uh, the main girl basically just puts a love spell on dipshit, so he'll, you know, be obsessed with her. Sydney wants a beauty spell, and Gianna basically just wants power. And uh, the, the spells end up working. Dipshit becomes obsessed with the main character. Rochelle's... Uh, bitchy Barbie classmate, uh, our hair starts falling out. Cindy's burnt scars start going away, and uh, Gianna kind of just gets power, I guess. She ends up giving her stepdad a heart attack, which leads to her and her mom finding out about uh, his massive life insurance. So they end up cashing out on that, and uh, her and her mom get a nice apartment. And the apartment even has a jukebox that plays... Uh some kind of records, I forget what kind. Now I know what you're thinking. Hey, this movie's going really well. Well, this is where it starts going downhill. For some reason, Gianna wants even more power. So she says, hey, let's go invoke the spirit. Which I thought they already did. Wasn't that the whole point of the park scene? I guess not. Whatever. So they end up going to some beach and they perform the ritual. And during the ritual, Gianna pulls out a snake. Remember earlier when, when the other girl didn't like snakes? Uh, it's coming back. Keep thinking about it. And uh, they, they do their Magic of Mystica thing, and it works. Because uh, the next day, uh, homegirl's pulling to Jesus. And she also killed a bunch of sharks, and uh, she's she's really into that. Like, re really, really into that. Hobby. Hobby! Get the fuck out of my chair, dude. What the fuck? You are now recording. All right, um, it is uh, the same day. Um, I didn't end up taking a uh, week break from this video because of a, uh, a, a minor manic episode. Unemployed life, gotta love it. But uh, anyways, where were we? So, um, of course, since, you know, something has to happen in this movie, um, shit starts going south. Um, there's this recurring theme of whatever you do, you get it back times three. So Sydney starts becoming like narcissistic, self-obsessed. She basically just gets really into herself. Uh, the racist girl, her hair starts falling out and like I'm supposed to feel bad about that, but I, I, I really don't whatsoever. She was a massive bitch. Gianna kind of just slowly starts going more and more crazy, you know, power hungry. Um, there's this whole driving scene where, you know, it kind of, culminates her and the main girl you know they're having this discussion and you can just really see where Gianna's going dipshit basically just starts picking the main girl and he finally ends up getting a date with her and uh, instead of you know like taking her to a restaurant or a movie or anything that you're supposed to do on a date he just takes her to some weird road up in the hills and as soon as you see this scene you think oh well this isn't gonna end good and it doesn't because uh he ends up trying to her. They both end up outside the car a few yards away, and instead of trying to steal his car while he's incapacitated because she kicks him in the balls, she decides to just start running into the woods, which me personally, I would hit a juke and jive on homeboy and then stole his car and left him there, but for some reason she doesn't. And she ends up at, I believe, Rochelle's house. I'm not entirely sure, but she's the one that opens the door. And all the other girls are there. She ends up telling them what happened. And Gianna finds out that there is a party going on that dipshit's at. So she decides to go there. Now, this next little bit, I don't really understand. I've seen this movie multiple times and I still don't understand why she does so. But Gianna basically seduces dipshit and tries to have sex with him. Uh, first, she tries to do it just as herself. And, you know, he pushes her off because he wants the main chick. But she ends up doing this uh, trick that they showed earlier in the movie, actually, where she just does this and then her face changes to the main girl's face and dipshit's like whoa that's crazy how'd you do that and that ends up working i guess it's just because he's stupid and drunk so the girls end up following gianna to the party and they find her upstairs and she's sitting a little r kelly bump and grind on homeboy which again i don't really understand the scene right before she leaves she kind of makes it ominous she's like oh it's time for me to go play and i was like oh shit, she's about to just go over there and murder him 
Gianna and the main girl start fighting, and it basically ends in Gianna going crazy and pushing dipshit out of a window, which kills him. And this is kind of the big event that basically starts tearing apart the coven. And the main girl is extremely freaked out by it. She ends up going back to her home and trying to do a binding spell on Gianna, which we think works, but uh, later we'll find out that it didn't. She's done her best to avoid the other girls at school. Um, they end up cornering her in the bathroom. We're showing after the uh, incident with dipshit that she's starting having nightmares about the three girls coming into her room and scaring her, which uh, for me, that would be a dream come true, but that's besides the point. And that's where we find out that Sydney's been the one giving her nightmares and the binding spell didn't work on Gianna. I'm assuming it's because she has more power. Um, you know, she invoked the spirit and she actually knows that she tried to do a binding spell on her because she tells her, please don't do that again. They basically threaten her to get out of town because they're gonna come after her if she keeps trying to mess with them. And that kind of segues into the big final sequence of the film. The uh, main girl tries to go to the magic shop one more time, basically because she wants to find out a way to get the girls to stop messing with her. And the old lady says, oh, you have to invoke the spirit. And she's like, I can't do that because I'm useless. She's like, no, no, I will help you do it. And she's like halfway through doing it and she ends up running away because John is after her. So she ends up running back to her house and she goes into the house and it's dark. No one's at the house and she gets a phone call and it's Gianna and she tells her that her parents died in a car crash. And it's heavily implied that Gianna's the one that caused this car crash. After that, there's this uh, really, really disgusting sequence that I do not like where the main girl is running through her house and there are snakes and roaches and maggots and worms everywhere. And I don't know about you guys, but I really don't like roaches in my house or like worms in my toilet. So it really got to me. But we end up finding out that it was basically just one massive illusion spell that Gianna cast on her. And now we're set up for the final showdown. So she goes back downstairs and she finds Gianna, Rochelle, and Sydney who are clearly not floating on strings. It's especially apparent with Sydney. Like, come on, what, what's what's his stance? What's his stance? And Gianna basically says, um, we're going to kill you, but it's gonna be fabricated in a way that it's going to look like homegirl killed herself. It's mentioned earlier in the movie that uh, she did actually try killing herself and she even did it the right way. But uh, yeah, that's their plan. Um, they have a suicide note and John ends up cutting the main girl's wrist. So it looks like this is it for uh, homegirl. She's bleeding out on the floor. Rochelle and Sydney are trying to find her, but she ends up casting an illusion spell and it looks like all of Rochelle's hair is falling out just like it did with Blondie. And Sydney looks like she got all of her scars back. Now, of course it's an illusion. Um, these things didn't actually happen to them, but that's what they think happened. So they end up running out of the house scared. So now it's just up to Gianna. So while Gianna's trying to find the manga, uh, she begins invoking the spirit. And it is mentioned that the spirit can work both ways, both good and bad. Gianna, of course, took in all the bad of it and the main girl needs to take and all the good of it. So she ends up doing that and she heals herself and John and the main girl have a, a, little, a little tussle, a little fight. Oh, this part's very dated effects wise. Um, you know, you, you can tell it was a 90s movie. I do like the sequence myself. I mean, in particular, there's this one shot where it looks like Gianna and the main girl are fighting on a wall and there's all of these books and papers just flying towards them. It's very hard to describe. I'm probably gonna put a clip of it up, but it's a very nice shot. I'm gonna like the way it was composed. You can clearly tell they did it. It's basically the same trick as Nightmare on Elm Street where they just filmed it at a different angle Basically, they just made the floor look like the wall and then they just filmed it at a different angle to make it look like it was a wall. Um, it's a very simple trick, but I love it and I really like the way it looks. It's a very, it's probably my favorite shot in the entire movie. But you know, they keep going back and forth, back and forth, but of course, you know, good wins always. And uh, Homegirl ends up beating Gianna. So this is the final basically scene of the film. We see the main girl moving back to wherever she came from. I forget where she came from, I'll put it up. We find out that her parents didn't actually die. That was just part of the illusion spell. Rochelle and Sydney end up coming back to talk to her. We find out that they don't have powers anymore. I assume it's because the coven's broken, but the main girl still has powers. She ends up making this big ass lightning storm for like three seconds to knock down a tree and scare them off. And we also find out that Gianna was put in a mental hospital. And that's pretty much the end of the movie. Now there was a sequel made called The Craft Legacy that came out in like 2020 or 2021. I refuse to speak on the movie. Uh, I know Veruja Bulk is in it, but once again, I refuse to speak on that movie. I refuse to watch it. Uh, I watched the trailer and I immediately knew what I was gonna get into if I tried to watch it. And it's such a weird movie to make a sequel of. I've never heard people speak about this movie. I've never heard anyone talk about wanting a sequel, but Hollywood's gonna do what Hollywood wants to do. So uh, yeah, uh, I'm a massive fan of this movie. I love it, I love the soundtrack, I love the look of it, and I do recommend you guys watch it. It's free on Tubi, it should be at least. They take it off and put it back on every couple months. It's very irritating, I still have yet to get a DVD for it for some reason. But uh, yeah, you don't even need an account, you can just 
look it up on Google and it'll pop right up. So uh, yeah, this is the first episode in a hopefully ongoing series. I apologize for not making any more You Should Bumps lately. Uh, I do have one in the works. Hopefully it comes out soon. Maybe it's on clipping, maybe it's not on clipping. Who knows? I might just keep that joke running until this channel eventually dies. But uh, yeah, this has been Cauldron of Thought. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.